This is Washington Times front page for Wednesday, August 9th, 2023. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has replaced his presidential campaign manager in the latest effort at a course correction. Tom Howell and Seth McLaughlin report in his third shakeup in recent weeks, DeSantis has removed Janera Peck, who led his successful gubernatorial campaign last year. New campaign manager James Youthmeyer is a longtime ally who had been serving as DeSantis's gubernatorial chief of staff. Peck will stay on as a top advisor. The rearrangement highlights DeSantis' struggle to find the right combination of personnel, strategy, and message to move the needle against former President Trump and reassure donors that his campaign is on track. D.C. Councilmember Trayon White says that Mayor Muriel Bowser needs to join him in calling out the D.C. National Guard to rein in violent crime. Matt Delaney reports White made his case for a military deployment during impassioned press conference just feet away from where three people were gunned down over the weekend on Good Hope Road in southeast. White said crime in his ward east of the Anacostia River has become a cancer that's spreading to other parts of the city. He's reached out to Bowser to discuss his proposed call-up of the National Guard, a deployment that will require coordination with the Department of Justice, the Department of Defense, and the White House. The nation's first nuclear power station to come online in seven years may herald a renaissance for the U.S. nuclear power industry. Susan Fericcio reports Plant Vodal, about 30 miles south of Augusta, Georgia, came online late last month and is generating enough power for half a million homes. Reactors have powered the U.S. energy grid for decades, but the shuttering of older plants is reducing nuclear's overall energy output. Thirteen nuclear power plants have closed since 2013. According to the Energy Information Administration, 94 commercial nuclear reactors are operating at 55 power plants in 28 states. Nuclear power generates nearly 20% of all energy in the U.S. and half of all clean energy production. Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas' behavior is wearing thin with House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan. Stephen Diner reports Republicans are pondering punishments for Mayorkas. Options include trying to reduce funding for his staff, holding him in contempt of Congress for refusing to provide answers, or moving to impeach him. Mayorkas' testimony at a July 26th hearing aggravated Republicans' dissatisfaction. And finally, Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Mark Milley says U.S. weapons stockpiles will not drop below acceptable levels of risk despite the constant flow of arms to Ukraine. Milley told Pentagon correspondent Ben Wolfgang that he and other top Defense Department officials closely monitor the number of American munitions on hand and won't allow them to drop below an acceptable threshold. The debate about Ukraine is growing in Washington's political and national security circles, including its prospects for a definitive victory against the invading Russian army and at what point the Biden administration may push Ukraine more aggressively toward peace negotiations. Find all today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app, and find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search Washington Times in any major podcast app. You can also find us on social media at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerber.